Hello, I'm Jamie Bucklin with the West Virginia Few Families United for Education, talking today with Sean and Grayson from the Art of Problem Solving. Sean, why don't you get us started? Tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got started with the Art of Problem Solving. I've been with Art of Problem Solving for six years now, and I've been in the academy space for the majority of the time here, but I've recently switched over to working with schools, institutions, and families that are interested in using our curriculum to supplement the student's education. And Art of Problem Solving is a way that if your kid's not challenged enough and wants to sink their teeth into more critical thinking, it's the right place to be. Great. And Grayson? I'm our VP of sales. I've been with Art of Problem Solving, or AOPS, as we like to call it, for about seven years. Worn several different hats. I'm with Sean. We engage with institutions on a daily basis. What that means is we're building relationships with schools and school systems, really of all kinds, all over the country, and helping to deliver our resources and our curriculum to them so that their students can benefit. Tell us a little bit about who you serve with the art of problem solving. Who's going to be interested in hearing more about what this program offers? Absolutely. Well, first and foremost, math enthusiasts, students that want to engage with math, let's say above and beyond what they might already be learning in school, students that might be interested in math camps, math competitions, or just are generally interested in problem solving as a hobby and an activity. Historically speaking, we've served families all over the country in all 50 states, very popular with the homeschool community. We have a couple different options. We have a full complete textbook series, and then we also have an accredited online school where you can come and take a number of courses. We also work with schools as well. And so there are plenty of schools out there that are looking for math textbooks, software, or even courses to put a couple of their students into that's just a little bit more rigorous and challenging than what you would typically find. So we are the place to be when it comes to that. Tell me a little bit about what that looks like for a family. If they do an online class, is this once a week? What does this look like? The way that I look at our offerings for families would be two kind of main options. We've got a full service route, and then we have a route where it's more learner directed, right? They're going through the, our resources and materials at their own pace. But let's take that first option. The full service route would be enrolling your student in our online school. This is a fully accredited online institution. Our accreditation is with WASC, the Western Association of Schools and Colleges. Our courses are also NCAA approved, if that matters for some folks. I know it does for a lot of them out there. I would be remiss if I didn't say that. We also have college board approval for our calculus course. It's recognized as fulfilling AP credits. This is basically an a la carte environment where you can come and see the menu of offerings that we have spanning pre-algebra all the way through calculus, all the typical subjects that you would find through middle school and high school, you know, geometry, algebra, that's all going to be in there. But again, us being the good math geeks that we are, we're going to offer courses and subjects that you wouldn't typically find in most schools. So discrete mathematics, number theory, counting and probability at introductory and intermediate levels. Then we also have a full, complete suite of math contest preparation courses and materials as well. So for any of the families and students out there that are interested in math counts, the AMCs, the Amy's, or even Olympiad level preparation, or maybe perhaps one day you'd like to get there, we would be the go-to resource for you. Historically, we have served all of the students who have done well in those competitions and contests. The math counts winners, all of those students have, you know, kind of grown up on our site and used our resources. I should mention, not only can you get world-class instruction in mathematics from world-class instructors, but it's also a place where if you're a mathy kid and you love math and you love problem solving, you're going to find your home here. You're going to find your tribe here. This is where you can meet and engage with and interact with students just like yourself who want to talk about math on a Saturday or want to talk about math after school. This is where you can kind of find your home in that regard. On the social aspect of things, this is a tremendous resource for so many families. It's kind of building a network while simultaneously offering instruction. We have a lot of folks in West Virginia or even outside of West Virginia that are part of this work and they're looking at starting these hybrid programs, maybe one day a week or two days a week. One of the barriers that I found in leading a hybrid program now for over a 
decade is that it's hard to bring that one room schoolhouse vibe to mathematics or to bring mathematics into that one room schoolhouse. Could you share a little bit about what that could look like for hybrid programs that maybe want to outsource this and use the art of problem solving as that outsource instruction to remove that responsibility from the parent? Could you share a little bit about what that would look like? It's kind of different for different places. Going back to that full service option, what some institutions like to do is they identify a subset or number of their students and they say, okay, you would be a really good candidate for an art of problem solving course. Logistically speaking, the commitment level of an art of problem solving course in the online school typically run anywhere from 12 to 25 weeks or so and are going to have one day per week of live instruction. We do have a couple self-paced courses as well, but all of our courses, we do have live offerings. And that's going to be for 90 minutes or so. And then outside of that in-class time is going to be roughly, depends on the student, but maybe five to seven hours per week of commitment in terms of assigned readings, challenge problems, a weekly capstone writing problem. And that'll be enough to keep you on the track. And then you'll progress through the course, you'll complete it, and then you can move on to another course that you would like. In terms of engaging, any of those courses are open, as are the self-paced options, which we have pre-algebra one, pre-algebra two, and introduction to algebra A. We have self-paced versions of those. Uh, So it covers all the same ground as the live offerings, but just doesn't have that live instructional component. We've restructured the program to operate more as a automated mathematical dialogue between our program and the student. So it, it still feels very engaging and exciting in that regard. The other end of things, which I haven't really discussed as much is If you're not enrolling students in our online school, we do have that complete textbook series. We not only have paper book options of all of our books, but we also have digital ebook versions. All things being equal, I always recommend the ebook versions just because they come with a whole variety of other really cool tools and features that wouldn't come in a paperback book. Now, don't get me wrong, there are plenty of benefits from that tactile holding of a book and turning the page and everything like that. But if it makes no difference to you, the online books, the ebooks, they have videos embedded in them, which really helps to bring the textbooks to life. So you might be reading a passage and then all of a sudden you're going to see a little video there. You can click on that. And you'll find one of our colleagues, Richard Russick, the founder of Art of Problem Solving, giving a wonderful demonstration of how to solve a problem, particularly engaging and sometimes funny way. He's kind of mastered the art of teaching in that way of connecting with students. And you'll find those videos sprinkled throughout the books. We also have in the books, digital text submission boxes for the hundreds of problems that you would see. So it's a wonderful place for students to not only submit their answers, but also type their notes, show their work. You can have that all in one place. And then the final thing I will say, which is one of my favorite things that we've developed, is that our books are also tied in with a proprietary software that we've developed called Alchemist. Alchemist is our adaptive learning program, and it's meant to deliver programs to students perfectly suited to their ability level, but within the subject and focus area that they're working on. So let's say you're in the very first section of our pre-algebra book, Arithmetic in Addition. You'd find the little Alchemist button in the upper right-hand corner of that ebook. You'd click that and it would take you to your Alchemist profile. And then you would be delivered a random problem within that focus area. Now, if you get it right, it's gonna ask you something slightly harder. You get it right again, harder still, until it finds kind of that perfect level of challenge for you to where if you keep going, you're really gonna build your problem solving chops and your problem solving stamina. So all of that really comes included within that ebook experience, which is why I really recommend that. And that I think is the answer to your question of trying to get that engaging, fulfilling experience Even if you're doing a hybrid model where you don't need to enroll a student in a full online course, but you can still get a lot of those engaging elements just from the ebook alone. You just answered a question that I actually had that I was going to ask you once we quit recording. And that was, did you have any recommendations for some type of adaptive learning software? Because I was just in a meeting last week where an entity that's looking to launch this micro school opportunity was asking if we knew of anything like that. And I didn't. What we've always had to rely on is a skilled math instructor who has knowledge in their skill set and is able to interact with the student to do that assessment. So I wasn't familiar with anything, but 
here we go, killing two birds with one stone because that's <laughs> exciting that that opportunity is there. And also, I love the argument for the eBooks because I am old school. I want a textbook. I have a really hard time teaching anything where I can't get my hands on it. I'm assuming the option would be then somebody that is old and set in their ways like me could have that physical textbook, but that wouldn't prevent the student from having access to that ebook and the software. It, it sounds like a really exciting opportunity, not just for parents, but also for providers. Thank you so much for sharing about the art of problem solving. I wonder if you could tell us a little bit more about the founder and how this came to be. If you could give us some of that story, I would love to hear that. I will try to do justice to Richard. Back when he was a undergraduate at Princeton University, he and a couple of his classmates endeavored to write a textbook that they thought the math world needed. They called it the art of problem solving turned into a two volume set. And essentially why they called it that and why they thought the world needed it is because a lot of math education, even when you get to really good private schools, it doesn't have enough of that critical thinking component, the creative reasoning component, kind of outside the box thinking. A lot of it is still very computational, heavy, algorithmic, even wrote a lot of times. If you learn math in that way, you're really limiting how much math you can ultimately learn because you're basically saying, the more that I memorize, the more that I can answer. Speaking for Richard, if I may, he would argue, okay, well, maybe it's better to memorize less, but fundamentally understand the calculations you're performing more, such that you could be given a novel problem that you haven't been shown how to solve before. And instead of shying away from it and saying, well, I don't know how to solve that. No one showed me. Instead, you'll say, I don't know how to solve it right away but I think I can figure it out. And ultimately that is the angle and the, the philosophy from which we create all of our stuff. We want to provide students with the confidence, the, the perseverance, the grit, the critical thinking, the problem solving chops, the creative reasoning so that they can do that and they can have that experience. So it's not just about helping students become better at math. It's really about helping students become better, more confident thinkers, period. Sean's a former educator. I've taught in the classroom a bunch of years myself. And we believe wholeheartedly that in this world that we live in today, the most important thing isn't to teach students rote skills. It's to teach them what we would call 21st century skills, to be an adaptable, creative thinker to be able to think on your toes or, ooh, you know, something else changed the paradigm of what we're in. Now, how do I solve it? Well, okay, I can work with that instead of being like, I'm completely lost. I have no idea what to do. That was kind of the impetus for helping to build and write those initial books and to help a lot of the students that have aspirations of doing well in math competitions and math contests. It's that way of thinking about math that ultimately serves them best. And so this was a resource for them that previously hadn't existed in the world. And about a decade or so later, we launched artofproblemsolving.com, which is where you can find more information about all this stuff that I'm talking about, including our origin story, more about the books, more about the classes, free resources there as well, all kinds of good stuff. We have a blog where we write about our thoughts on education and math education. 2003 is when we became incorporated and we formally launched the online school and we haven't looked back since. I love that. Thank you so much for sharing. It is inspiring to me as someone who's been in this game now, homeschooling for 15 years, but I have this five-year-old, so I still have at least a decade to go. But it's inspiring to hear about thinkers and educators that are fostering curiosity because often I think that when we start to think about the creation and implementation of curriculum, we don't necessarily have that initiative, the uh, fostering curiosity, like it needs to be at that forefront. I don't know that it's always there, but it sounds like what you guys are doing, you've demonstrated that, right? If that's 2003, that's 19 years that this has been in practice. So you're able to demonstrate that you guys have been engaging students in that way for this amount of time. That's really exciting. That doesn't feel too innovative at this point with a lot of innovative ideas. We'll hear people, especially post-pandemic, they're like, well, this new innovative model, but you can have 
have this research behind what you've been doing because you've got 19 years standing behind you. So thank you for sharing that. And I told you all before that I thought I had all of my math plans figured out until I found out about you guys. And now you've disrupted my course of action for my own students in a great way though. So thank you so much for sharing. It's exciting to me to hear how families are going to use the art of problem solving in their homes and then how entrepreneurs are going to partner with you all to use it in their program. So it'll be great to catch up next year and see what this has looked like for those that were introduced to your materials through the work of the West Virginia Fuse. So thanks so much for talking with me. I enjoyed it. All right. Thank you. Take care. Thank you.